What up African world, it's Home Team here, and welcome back to another video of African history, culture, and worldview. Today, we're going to be speaking about a mythological tradition from a people group known by some for being specialists of the forest. By supporting this channel on Patreon, you're helping in the creation of these videos and contributing to this content. The link to Patreon is in the description box below. Also, stay tuned with a word from my sponsors. Hello, my name is Howard Dorsey. I'm 54 years old. I'm here to talk about my uh, experience with herbal results. Um, I was getting sick, so I, I went to the doctor and they told me that um, my blood pressure was high my cholesterol was borderline or high, so I was very sick. You know, I thought I was, sometimes I thought I was dying at, at some point. And uh, I ordered a bottle of olive leaf extract. This is, this is how the bottle comes in. And within the first probably week and a half, two weeks, I checked my blood pressure and it was back down to normal. It was like 120 over 80. So my cholesterol went down to uh, 125. You know, I definitely believe that olive leaf extract from Herbal Results saved my life. And I, that's real. I mean, I, 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 and I recommend it to everyone in my family, my friends, and we've seen a lot of results in that, in that manner as well. Purchase now at HerbalResults.net. To begin, the title of this video may be a little controversial for some as the term pygmy has been criticized as having negative connotations. I feel it important to acknowledge the sensitivities of some viewers and not dismiss any concerns. Please keep in mind that I don't have any nefarious intent with the use of this title. However, to ameliorate some potential concerns, I'll be referring to them as the forest specialist. Traditionally, Western scholarship has labeled them as one group of Africans due to their similar physical features, most saliently their short stature. Despite that reality, these African populations still remain a diverse group of peoples. There are many forest specialists that possess different languages and cultures. According to one source, some of them aren't even aware of the others. Certain segments of Western scholarship has grouped them together as one homogenous group as mentioned before. However, this idea has been consistently challenged. Today, we're going to be learning about the oral or mythological story specifically of the Bambuti or Mbuti groups of people. The Bambuti have multiple subgroups who may or may not share the same oral tradition. Though this story comes from the Bambuti four specialist groups, the source used in this video advertises it as a general four specialist tradition as the term Bambuti itself is not in the oral tradition. The tradition you are going to hear, I presume, is an ancient one due to the nature of it. Although this story may not apply to all of the four specialists, it's possible that it applies to some. One of the reasons why I found this story so interesting is because of who the Bambuti people are. The Bambuti are one of the oldest indigenous people of the Congo region of Africa. They are composed by bands which are relatively small in size ranging from 15 to 60 people. This quote stood out to me because of what it reminded me of. Scholar Yuval Harari in his book Sapiens tells us that early humans used to operate in small bands. Ostensibly, humans did not start out in large groups operating together. It seems as though the Bambuti continued this very ancient tradition and perhaps their mythological story regarding the discovery of fire is a very old one. Keep in mind that the story relayed to you in this video may have a slight variation or detail that differs from the original. Also, it's possible that numerous versions of the story exist amongst the other subgroups, so please keep this in mind. Despite the possibility of variation, it seems as though the essence of the story is captured. Let's begin. One day, a forest specialist came upon a chimpanzee village. They welcomed him hospitably feeding him bananas and allowing him to warm himself by the fire. He came back again and again, and each time they gave him a good welcome. One day, he appeared wearing a strange costume of 
pounded bark with a long tail. He came at midday while the adult chimpanzees were out in their banana plantations and only small chimpanzees remained in the village. The small chimpanzees greeted him as they had seen their parents do and they offered him bananas and sat with him next to the fire. They saw that his tail was lying close to the embers and risked catching fire. They warned him about this, but he said that it didn't matter. He ate his bananas and sat there talking with them. Eventually, his tail did catch fire, and then he rose up and leaped around as though he was trying to put it out, and crying as though he was suffering from the pain. The small chimpanzees followed him, shouting and laughing at the excitement. When he reached the edge of the village, however, he suddenly dashed straight into the forest. The small chimpanzees shouted out in surprise and alarm, and some of the adults came running to learn what was happening. They quickly guessed that this forest specialist had come into this costume to steal fire, and so they ran after him. But they came too late. By the time they reached the human village, he had already distributed his prize among the other households. The chimpanzees reproached the humans for stealing the gift of fire, rather than paying honestly for it. But the humans cared nothing for that. So the chimpanzees returned to the forest. They gave up the practice of all the arts that they had possessed and lived like animals. This is a very simple story, but I think we can take something from it. Of course, it's unwise to adopt mythological stories as factual information, but we can make inferences based on what we perceive to be the essential meaning. Perhaps the Bambuti are telling us a very ancient story of how forest specialists in general, or their group specifically, learned how to make fire from other African peoples they encountered. Or perhaps by observing chimpanzee behavior, it gave them an idea on how they could start fire. It's nearly impossible to delineate meaning from a story like this, and I think that's part of the beauty of it. People, upon hearing the story, will come away with something different. Be sure to comment below what you think the story is telling us. Well, I'm all out, guys. If you like these videos and want to help in its continued production, consider supporting the home team on Patreon.com. The link is in the description box below. Know thyself. Remember your ancestors. Peace.